Hello everyone, my name is Jeanette Camping and on behalf of Henry Stewart Events, I'd like to welcome you to our three-part webinar series, Workflow Automation, How to Optimise for Efficient Creative Operations, sponsored by Global Edit. We're delighted to have a global, audi global audience of over 500 creative ops professionals registered for the series. There will be time at the end of the session dedicated to Q&A, so please post your questions on your GoToWebinar panel. We'll be following up with everyone after the presentation with a recording of the webinar. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce our speakers for today, Rana Dutt and Brian Gavin. Thank you both for joining us and over to you, Brian. Thank you so much, Jeanette. And, and thank you to Henry Stewart for welcoming Global Edit and AWS uh, Amazon Web Services together here today to spend the next 45 minutes really unpacking creative workflow automation and the scale that technology has brought to us as creatives, producing tons of content uh, in an ever-changing world. So I'm very happy to introduce myself. I'm Brian Gavin. I'm the president of Global Edit. We're the leading creative workflow management solution. And also, uh, Rana, uh, to go ahead and say hello and introduce yourself. Thanks, Brian and Jeanette. Uh, my name is Rana Dutt, and I'm a senior solutions architect at AWS. So I help companies build scalable and cost-effective solutions uh, on the AWS cloud. It's good to be with you. Thanks so much, Rana. And a big thank you to you for all the time you spent with me, not only as a partner preparing for this webinar, but Amazon Web Services being the backbone to the really fast growth that we've seen here at Global Edit. I think we're in, in for an exciting conversation today. Our goal uh, for everyone on the line today is that you walk away with some key takeaways on how to optimize for a more efficient creative workflow. And we're gonna be focused on helping you understand how to harness the power of creative workflow management solutions that are natively now available within the, in the cloud and available to enterprises at a really low barrier to entry. And, um, with that, we're going to dive into a little bit of what the history of uh, workflow automation has been and um, get get started. So for anyone who uh, may want to get in touch with Rana or I after this, our uh, QR codes here are available um, as well as our email. So we're going to dive right into automating image and video workflows. And Rana, before I do, I'm just curious, you've been in the industry a long time. Uh, Creative workflow automation has probably evolved a lot in your eyes and, and tell us a little bit about how you've seen that transpire. Oh, absolutely. So uh, before I came to work at AWS about four years ago, I worked in healthcare. Uh, and then before that, uh, I worked in advertising. So this was about 10 years ago. Uh, I have seen where, for example, we were tasked to deploy a website to coincide with the Super Bowl that year. And uh, we had a pretty talented team, but we uh, struggled to get all the assets uh, together uh, just in time to launch on that Super Bowl day. Uh, so because of the fact that we didn't have good search tools uh, for uh, cataloging our images uh, and uh, because the client kept changing their mind. So uh, we kept having to uh, you know, look in different myriad places manually for all these images. Uh, so the end result was that uh, we, well, we got the website launched in time for the Super Bowl, but all our team uh, were so tired that we we slept right through it and, and we missed it completely. So uh, at that point, I said, you know, there's got to be a better way, and this is why I'm excited uh, about how the cloud has really uh, revolutionized uh, how we uh, label content and classify content, and I'm excited to to address that today. It's a great topic to talk about why we're thinking about automating workflows now. And for Global Edit and the focus that we've had as a software focused on creative workflow management, it's a lot about the experience to the creative, uh, but it's also about the impact to the end user. And so, Rana, as you've understood and, and worked across industries, how has the justification of automating workflows been presented to you as a leader within the organization or as uh, architect of folks moving into the cloud and working to build in, on top of Amazon Web Services. Absolutely. So we have seen four primary benefits and drivers for companies uh, to move to the cloud to automate workflows. Uh, first of all, it saves them time. So they may save hours of time during the day 
uh, which of course, uh, when you save time, that translates immediately to saving dollars. Uh, secondly, uh, it eliminates uh, human errors. Uh, and the other thing is that uh, it allows people to focus on higher value tasks uh, so that uh, they don't need to be uh, stuck doing um, more menial tasks. And fourthly, of course, all the processes become a lot more consistent, a lot more automated, uh, and uh, that, that, of course, increases productivity. So we're talking a lot about the cloud and automation, and for the folks that are on, maybe in the depths of the creative and producing beautiful imagery or beautiful video at the benefit of technology, how has the advancements in technology made it something that I can realize more as a creative and, and less of I've gone to IT and they've you know, kind of pushed me back on a really, it's a high cost to buy all the infrastructure and the hardware to get going to, to kind of take that next step in technology. Is there something that Amazon Web Services or the cloud in general has eliminated that now as a creative person who really just cares about do I produce great content, you, you've provided as a benefit or an, as an availability to make this a, an easier reality? Yeah, absolutely. So as I was saying, uh, about 10 years ago, this was mainly a manual process to classify images and videos, to tag them and then search like that. Uh, towards the earlier part and the middle part of the last decade, we began to see software that would help uh, you know, uh, tag videos and images and to search that content via the tags, but it was still a manual process. Someone still had to manually uh, tag all that content. What has happened in the last, I would say, four to five years that has truly revolutionized these kinds of tasks for creatives uh, is the advent of machine learning and the cloud, those two things. So basically what's happened is that because the cloud makes available thousands of uh, uh, horizontally scaled uh, compute servers uh, and uh, terabytes and terabytes of storage, uh, all at the click of a button and all at a relatively cheap price, the prices have come down such that it, we the cloud now enables machine learning to be in the hands of companies of every size, even a small company now, uh, can take advantage of machine learning on the cloud. Uh, and because it's all on-demand, pays you of pricing, and because it's so cheap, uh, every company of every size uh, can now take advantage of this technology uh, to do digital asset management, uh, to do automated content classification, content moderation, uh, campaigns, and so on and so forth. That speaks to the information from our side, and I know we talk about this a lot, Rana, uh, working very closely with Amazon Web Services, 90% of the dam systems are already running in the cloud or are headed that way as of this year. And certainly, as all of us can probably reflect back on the last year of what has creative content production been like when I had to function totally remotely or in a hybrid capacity, it's so strange. It's like that, that switch of running in the cloud happened overnight for a lot of us or now in a lot of our minds, either at, at the executive level or at the level of producing that content, the accessibility of that content is so important. And you touched on, on two different uh, verbs that I wanted to come back to, which was it's cheap, but I think a great way of thinking about that is that it's really scalable. And Global Edit, um, from modernizing our platform in the last several years, the ability, and I think just to kind of break down what does the cloud mean, it means that your business or your software or your company doesn't rely on hardware that lives within your own organization's walls. It means that you're leveraging technology that's accessible through uh, the beautiful art of having really reliable internet connection to access infrastructure, that technology that unpacks the tools that we need as creatives every day. So Rana, from, from your perspective, and how people go about kind of validating, is it, is it the right time for me to look at advancing my technology? Are there key points of how Amazon looks at whether this is a scalable or a, a realistic opportunity to take advantage of? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, storage for most companies uh, is uh, growing exponentially. And what AWS does is it makes terabytes of storage and petabytes of storage available without going through a long procurement cycle. So it's not just the cost savings and the commoditization of storage in this manner, it's also the agility that you get uh, being uh, on a cloud service such as AWS. Uh, and then beyond that storage layer, we've also gone vertically uh, to give machine learning and AI capabilities, give that to a mass audience. Um, in other words, you don't have to be a large enterprise uh, to take advantage of image processing, object recognition, um, and things of that nature. You can afford to do that. Uh, because of the pay-as-you-go pricing. There are no contracts to sign. Uh, there, is, there is no uh, uh, you know, large upfront payment. Uh, you can basically just get your content in the cloud and then you can um, leverage all these services immediately. And I know we're gonna get into some examples of this workflow, but I guess it might mean that instead of just the creative team or the retouching team relying on a specific set of servers within my own office or a specific software, the ability to be really end-to-end -end connected in my workflow. This asset now can, if, it, if you're working with a JPEG or a TIFF or a video in a .mov file, that, that asset that we're so focused on within our own roles producing now can extrapolate value from one stage of the workflow and carry it on to the next because the ability to maintain all of that data and the versions of those assets and the variety of that asset that need to be really customized to fit the huge audience that we're serving it to, all of that can essentially be preserved in this model that we're moving to. Yes, absolutely. So we think of solutions as a pipeline of services that you stitch together to fit your use case. So you're absolutely right. This isn't just for creatives. Uh, if you have uh, an accounts payable department, then invoices can be automated. Uh, if you have a marketing department, then those campaigns can be automated. Uh, workflow automation is all about eliminating manual steps, right? To eliminate human errors and to improve productivity. Uh, and so, as you said, uh, this applies to all kinds of different departments. So let's unpack the digital asset management before and after, right? I think this is so cool yeah. because there really isn't, I don't think we're all in the after yet, even within our own walls of global edit, we're guilty of some of this. So I think it's it's important for us all to know that the steps of what we're talking about today are something that our goal is to help you realize that it, you're capable and you have the tools to get there. But the before the cloud, and I think again, I, it's still a lot of us living here, is files for retouching were transferred via an FTP server generating thumbnails was, it, was its own specialized application. Tagging and metadata lived in its own universe of, of one system, probably or potentially entirely disconnected from the images or videos them, themselves, excuse me. And then searching was really laborious. I, I talked to so many brands that want that ability to find the needle in the haystack, but until they've gone the way of investing in a platform like Global Edit or have their images managed within infrastructure like Amazon Web Services, these are still really difficult basic tasks to perform and we can't think about the next level machine learning or, and image recognition capabilities that we have. But we now have the ability here to see after cloud, it looks very similar but much more streamlined. Absolutely. So if you look at the diagram that's labeled after the cloud, you can see how this entire pipeline of generating thumbnails and then classifying content with tagging is entirely automated with no human beings involved. So you start off with ingesting your images via your SFTP server um, and then uh, Amazon, uh, basically it goes into an S3 uh, input bucket. As soon as that image or video hits that bucket, that triggers two workflows automatically. The first workflow uh, down at the bottom is gonna generate the thumbnails automatically uh, from that image. Um, and then the second workflow is gonna trigger uh, machine learning where that uh, Amazon recognition 
is the service that will then look at that image. It'll identify all the objects that are in there. It, you know, it'll identify that whether the picture has inside it uh, cars uh, or trees and things of that nature. And it will then automatically tag that image. And then all those tagged images wind up in another bucket so that, that you can then search uh, that entire uh, photo library or video library uh, with the tags and with the content classification type. And the rate in which the efficiency of a creative content producer you're able to move from capture to distribution is probably amazingly more fa is amazingly faster with the capabilities. And whether you're investing in technology directly within Amazon Web Services or Global Edit specifically, where we've adopted and leveraged a lot of this technology for the users of our platform, for the creative content producers and for the marketers, these capabilities are kind of at our fingertips now. But this evolution of refining process has always been happening. You talked about before coming to Amazon Web Services, some of the history of automation you saw. And I think this is a really interesting example outside of what we all probably want to deal with, which at the end of the end of the production is reconciling production costs. But this is another way to kind of look at how has process of many steps collapsed to, to fewer. So and I think the benefit to this, Rana, when we when you and I were diving into this content a little bit, was the team within finance or creative is still thriving and growing within these organizations, but responsibilities themselves have changed. Absolutely. So before, let's say that you had an accounts payable team that was responsible for processing invoice invoices, there were still some human steps involved. You would probably get mailed a paper invoice. There would be a clerical type of person who would then take that paper invoice, put it into a scanner, get a PDF, and then send the PDF via email to the accounts payable person who would then have to import uh, data manually into an accounting system. They would review that, they would approve it, and then they would print out a check on a paper printer. That paper check along with the original invoice would then get sent to another clerical type of person who would put it into an envelope, put a stamp on it and mail it, right? So lots of human steps, lots of manual steps. Whereas with the advent of the cloud, and these types of higher level services that do uh, OCR, mm -hmm. this entire invoice processing workflow can be automated such that the invoice could come in via email as a PDF. We could take extract the PDF out of the email automatically and then scan that PDF with, using Amazon Textract, uh, which is a very advanced OCR system, and then immediately figure out who the vendor is and what the build amount is that then automatically gets imported into the accounts payable system here i'm showing high iq.ai which is one of our partners that goes into the invoice uh, accounts payable pro uh, system and the accounts payable system can have a set of rules that says well if the invoice is let's say under a certain amount uh, like under a few hundred dollars and that this is a vendor that we recognize and it's a, it's a monthly invoice well there's no need to even go through a human approval process we're just going to electronically send an ACH payment to right, right to the vendor's bank. So there's no, not even a paper check to print out, right? This is an example of a completely automated invoice processing flow uh, where there is no human uh, involvement whatsoever. And the finance team and the accounting teams, the, the teams are still thriving within the organization. So as and I think relating to the creative side of collapsing many to few steps, the accounting team members and the finance team members who are operating in this type of, I would say, more advanced processing way, their roles have adopted. They haven't, they haven't been alleviated. They're not that they are displaced within the organization. They're actually allowed to, whether you're on the creative side, and I think the invoice example here resonates so well, which is, they're focused on higher value tasks for the organization. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're in finance, what you want to do is focus on profit and loss statements and more strategic ways, right, to manage the, the company's uh, financial uh, expenses. Uh, and you don't really want to, you know, spend a lot of your time with these uh, rote, menial uh, type of tasks. And I and think the, the theme, 
Rana applies on the creative side, which is if yes. I, as a creative content producer or the executive sponsor of the campaigns, or am I am the CMO of the organization, whether you're in finance and accounting or you're in creative or sales or marketing, there is often, hey, is there an ROI to the investment that we're discussing here today? And, and I think we can pretty clearly talk about through some of the examples of Global Edit and also the success stories of Amazon Web Services, ROI is meant to be transparent with the investment in workflow automation and cloud technology. Absolutely, and uh, I think in the creative operations world, you can directly measure ROI by leveraging the cloud and machine learning. You can directly measure it uh, in terms of time saved in hours. Uh, yep. and, and we have many. We have several customers who can testify uh, to the amount of time that they've saved. So before we unpack some of the customers and the success stories, I think part of what systems like Global Edit that operate in the in the cloud offer, and by leveraging Amazon Web Services that are highly scalable, whether it be from a storage perspective, which is essentially infinite, or to the ability to upload tens of thousands of images all at once, the benefit to the user, to the creative and marketing teams who are really core to the content that's produced within the organization or at an agency or as an original content or a theatrical content creator is you're consolidating the systems. We saw it in the invoice example. You you consolidated down, a, writing a check and licking an envelope is a system, or having email and having five or six systems to transact assets, those are the same systems that we want you to be able to not just consolidate, but streamline the time of moving between those steps that each of the systems manipulates. And that's a lot of the success that we see with Global Edit is, it refines not just the systems that you use, but the automation between those workflow steps that are essential to produce great content. So Rana, you've seen this happen in some really amazing scale uh, by clients who have invested in Amazon Web Services and the technologies that exist. So I'd love for you to help us understand there's kind of a variety of different success stories based upon different, we'll say asset types that folks have invested to produce their Amazon Web Services. So help us understand is it just if I produce a photo or a video, can I benefit? Or is it is it all asset types that can benefit from this workflow automation and cloud acceleration effort that we're speaking to? It really is all different asset types and uh, many, many different types of workflows uh, that can be automated. So we have an example where our customer, one of our customers is C-SPAN, who, as you know, uh, trains their cameras on government events every single day and through the course of the years they have collected and stored thousands of hours of videos, right, covering events in Congress and government. Uh, so this is a quote that's taken directly from a tech manager at C-SPAN. He said that by using Amazon recognition, which is our image recognition service, we are able to tag who is speaking on camera at what time down to the second if needed. And what the tech manager at C-SPAN said is that uh, recognition allows us to index twice as much content as we do currently, uh, from 3,500 hours a year to 7,500 hours a year. So for the first time, C-SPAN has been able to index 100% of their first run content, uh, thanks to AWS recognition uh, and this, this the cloud platform. Uh, he's also said that um, it was shockingly easy to set this all up. I mean, they've got 97,000 video entities in their database uh, and it was easy to set this up so that they could index all the content. So that's a, that's a testimonial from C-SPAN. CBS is another one of our customers. They're using recognition to moderate uh, content in images and videos. So uh, they're basically removing um, offensive content uh, like nudity and so on from their videos. And uh, these are capabilities that used to be completely manual before, but now because recognition can recognize uh, content that's not safe for work or content that's offensive, that recognition can just go ahead and remove that content uh, for them. Uh, Praymaker, this is an interesting story because this is 
the first visual effects studio uh, that was built entirely in the cloud. If, if, for those of you who know, produce visual effects, uh, let's say for those cool effects that are in movies like Fast and Furious and that are in uh, commercials these days, most of those visual effects workstations are very high end. Uh, and so they stay on premises because of all the uh, tricked up hardware that you need, right? Uh, well, so PrayMaker then, uh, instead of using on-prem workstations, were ab able to build those very high-end uh, workstations in the cloud. They were able to use uh, the cloud then uh, to do their visual effects uh, content creation. So these are all great uh, stories of customers in the media space uh, taking advantage of AWS and the cloud. And there were, as you were talking through those stories, there's three things that I just wrote down that I think are really important is the comprehensiveness that these organizations can run at, whether it's the ability to index and tag 100% of their content or to scale the throughput of that content. It, a lot of this has to do with being comprehensive to all of the content that, that a brand has access to. And it might be for the longevity of the brand, it could be for the lifetime of that campaign that you're running, but the comprehensiveness of having all of the information as a creative content producer or someone who accesses the content, be it that you're the consumer or you're the marketer, you actually have really empowered that comprehensiveness to all of the assets. And I think the, the nice part about this is we're talking about a variety of assets. It may have been a, the time and place when your e-commerce website was solely focused on having great product imagery to sell your content. But what's accompanied alongside your, your product imagery now? You're producing video, you may have a, a VR experience. So you have a variety of different content formats that at scale can be challenging to solve without the right technology in place. So I think as we kind of move on to the modernization that certain references have already experienced is there's a major impact once the asset is already produced but there's a huge part up front, which in the global edit side, we're really focused on, which is when that image or that video is initially captured, or you're actually planning to capture it, you're, you're getting ready to launch a campaign and you're, you wanna go out and you wanna request that photographer to upload their content, or you wanna provide a batch of images to be retouched really quickly. The combined horsepower of, Amazon Web Services and Global Edit together is actually about, as a content producer, being comprehensive to all of the assets that you're producing for that campaign in one place. That those assets and are at the right step in their process. It's so interesting as I have the opportunity to talk with hundreds of prospective and existing clients about how they're solving the challenges of scale. A lot of it has to do with we have a very rigid structured process that our creative content needs to go through. We just wanna go through that process easier. So part of what our thought process to that is, let's define your workflows. Let's automate and create workflow automation recipes as we refer to them here at Global Edit to allow you to really push that asset and push the team members through the process as efficiently as possible. The complementary part of that, Rana, and I think this is where I'm, I'm interested to hear from you is the complements to that is it having that intelligent asset and having that variety of assets that may or may not be alike to what I'm already producing at my fingertips. So recognition and personalization are two huge areas that Amazon has poked into helping to solve those scale challenges. How are you seeing it be enacted within specific organizations that you're working with? Sure. So, uh, yeah, as you said, you know, customers come to a company such as Earth Global Edit to uh, automate their workflows, and then you then come and leverage the services on our back end uh, to do exactly that. But just as you said, Brian, we see this applied in other divisions of the company, such as we see it for marketing, uh, where uh, we help uh, custo customers uh, hone their marketing strategy and automate the way they send their emails and track their campaigns, the success of their campaigns. We also see it in personalization, uh, where we customers are driving better engagement with their users on their websites because they're personalizing uh, that website 
to previous patterns of engagement by the end user. So these are where it's, it's not just creative, it's other departments that are now taking advantage of all of these different services uh, that, that we offer. And it, and it gets back to what, what you were sharing through the success stories, which is the ability to be comprehensive in the data that you manage all together that's accessible by a variety of different systems because now you have a set of images that aren't just accessible to the one server in your office that has access to do uh, image tran or video transcoding or uh, image resizing. This, these set of assets that we're so hard at work producing as a creative, it's now in a variety of ways accessible to a, a lot of other teams that we know we can't provide content for fast enough. And that gets to kind of look at when you, when you look at how your images are actually touching or your data is touching a variety of other systems, I think this is a good way, as we've talked a lot about this at Global Edit and we really study how our prospective and existing customers want to see the assets evolve, images come from a variety of places and they go to a variety of places. Project management systems, e email service providers, the product information management system that has all that rich data about that product photography that I'm producing, or that, or the website that relies on the content that us as creators produce to support the business growth that our e-commerce websites fuel, no longer are they these isolated silos of product. They really need access, back to that word that you used so perfectly, Rana, it's they need to be comprehensive. And that ability to be comprehensive as a creative content producer means that an image that's stored within Global Edit is also provided to your dam to start to manage asset rights and versions or to your website to speed up that go to market or your product information management system is actually helping fuel your marketing team because your content is more searchable. So that that word comprehensive just come, keeps coming back to me so time and time again. And I think it it speaks to that world that we're at from a technology perspective, which is as a content producer or or the president of Global, I expect my the systems that I use to manage my business to be connected. So Rana, I, I guess before we go on uh, to talk a little bit about some of the services and the applicability of that is, what does it mean to be connected from an ecosystem perspective at AWS? How how do you help brands realize that they truly can be in a connected ecosystem of a variety of different solutions, which if if you can kind of go with me here for a second, these almost represent different unique teams within the organization in some way, shape or form. Yeah, absolutely. Central to this is your content. So once your content lands on AWS, then there's an entire universe of services uh, that offer you a variety of services. It could be something like you have a PDF and you need it translated from English to Spanish, or you've just scraped some sentiment, you've just scraped some content from Twitter, and now you want to see what the response was uh, to the product that you just launched. You want to gauge what that sentiment is, right? Are people happy? Are they sad? You you want once once you have content, now you want to use that content, let's say, in a marketing campaign, right? Or you want, or for example, you want to integrate some things that you've just created uh, with your finance system uh, and calculate ROI. All of these things now, because AWS is has such an integrated set of services that all work so well with each other, all of these different high-value automated workflows become possible, whether you want to offer a video on demand service uh, or whether you want to moderate and remove offensive content, image labeling, video labeling, personalization, campaign, all of these things now revolve around the content that you've just put into AWS and then they, these workflows can be triggered uh, you know, from the content that you put in because all these services on AWS work so well with each other. And that's, you said that twice now on talking about what it means when content is all, we'll say, managed within the same place, which is managed within the cloud. It yep. works well together. It No yes. longer do you have 
one format of an image not be able to be uploaded to one system because there's these blocks in uh, in, in uh, software fit, the the assets work well together because they all live within the same place, which in the global edit world and in the AWS world, it's it's in the cloud and it's and it's easily transferable. So Rana, let's let's talk about we've been talking um, a lot about some of the really high value technology that Amazon brings to image and video management. And one of them is Amazon recognition. And it's amazing the variety of use cases that it can be used for. And I think you can help us understand as a content producer, where are some of the low hanging fruit that this really scalable technology can be applied within my organization? Sure, so uh, let's take an example of tagging images. Uh, Amazon recognition, uh, if you look at the picture of the bicyclist, uh, it can automatically draw bounding boxes uh, around each object it recognizes, like the bicycle, the rock, and things like that. And then it'll give you a confidence score. Basically, it's saying that I recognize with 95% accuracy that this is a bicycle or this is a helmet. And so it's going to then uh, label that image and give you all the confidence scores and bounding boxes. That's just one capability. Now, over on the right of that picture where you see all the dogs in that picture, if uh, out of the box you show recognition a picture of a dog, it's going to just label it as a dog. Whereas if you are more of a dog breeder, and it's much more important for you uh, to, or let's say you're hosting a dog show, for example, then, and it's much more important for you to recognize the breed of dog. Is this a terrier or a collie or an Alsatian? Then what you can do is you can upload to recognition custom videos, uh, sorry, custom images of the breeds or you know, custom images of what you want to classify Mm -hmm. Train recognition on your particular phrases and labels of images, and then show recognition new ones. And recognition will say, "Yep." Instead of recognition will say that, "Okay." Instead of saying that it's a dog, it actually will say, "Okay, this is a collie, for example." All right. Uh, content moderation. We've already talked about that. It, it'll automatically um, remove and, and flag. Uh, offensive or not safe for work content. Um, it can recognize text, uh, like the runners on that uh, in that video have a number. It'll actually figure out what that numeric value is. It has a database of celebrities. So any person who's in the actor and actress database and IMDB, it'll know who they are and tell you who they are. Uh, and the other thing is that pathing where it can follow a sporting event uh, and track a particular athlete. So these are these are really all, all and of course, uh, it can work on live streaming video too. Uh, so it can recognize objects as video is live streamed. And we're very excited about that particular feature. And it's amazing because if you look back five years ago, I don't think we were as excited or as optimistic that this was a almost immediate reality that we could implement into a highly scalable solution. And with, the right brains at the table, uh, the effort to stand up something like this um, is is so different than it was even just a year or two ago, not even five years ago. And I see this impacting some of the roles in creative because a lot of the folks that we work with up front are focused on the role of a digital asset manager or a taxonomist or the roles that are that have the upfront detail about what is in that image and we talked about that kind of change of the accounting team and the finance team as sending out invoices changed that role of some folks within the creative organization as they're able to leverage technology becomes less about individual asset tagging and more about producing the right curations of content and helping our audience as a digital asset manager of our of our systems to share with the creative teams and the marketing teams the infinite content that we can now, because we have that comprehensive ability to manage years of content at once, the applicability is not just when it's in the wild or it's already produced, but it's actually, hey, I can now maintain a comprehensive library of my content for the years that my brand has produced as a way of inspiration. So I think the 
the labeling, and as we know uh, on the creative side, it, it might be applying metadata or tags. I think we're, we're seeing this technology of recognition be that disruptor back to the, the invoice process, which in the creative world is the role of the digital asset manager and some of the key roles in creative, which apply tags as part of the production process are, are changing and evolving. And we see the, the ability of the technology also evolving and is getting quite sophisticated and, and seeing what it's capable of doing, Rana. Absolutely. So yeah, as a creative person, you can now focus on your customer and what the customer needs and put together a story for them as opposed to what fiddling around with what the technology actually does for you, right? Uh, if you can drag and drop an image onto a web page, you can use recognition. You don't need to be a machine learning scientist to be able to use recognition. You can just, you just upload an image and recognition gets to work uh, labeling things for you. Here's an example where an image with a skateboarder a skateboarder is uh, labeled uh, by, uh, by recognition, for example. And, and probably something that we deal with uh, very often is it's multiple variables within the image and, and having that confidence and that ability to not just tell me what's in the image, but maybe attributes about the image themselves, which I think as, as a creative, we often don't get time to think about. It's, it's more just what's the product that's in this image, less about the context. And, and Amazon is actually helping to provide the contextual part of the creative as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, it, it can actually, rather than with specific objects, it can basically classify the image and tell you that it's that this is about sports in general, right? Or the other things in the image are are about architecture in general, uh, you know, as opposed to you know specific objects in this image. So it can it can generate specific themes. That's really awesome. And the other part is helping us know to a confidence level. Are, how confident are we about what's in the image, right? Yep, and here's where you've got uh, percentage scores, as I mentioned, that uh, basically score how well recognition thinks it matched uh, an object to a label. I want to get to one example that I think really resonated so well with me, which is as a brand, influencers are probably the, the most popular marketing investment that we may make if we're a fast growing fashion brand, cosmetics company, or even in, in the depths of producing uh, uh, media content. It's not just about identifying the images that you produce, but it's probably images that are in the wild as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, here's an example where uh, you can extract text out of an image and notice in this picture, the word restaurante is not uh, horizontally written out. It's in this stylized semicircular shape, uh, which traditionally has been difficult for computers to recognize words when they're in stylized shapes like that. But recognition can absolutely pick that out and, get, and uh, extract all the words out of all these different images. <clears throat> and for those of us who work with influencers, the ability to let the technology do the work for you means that you actually can track down all of the content in the wild. You can rely on the technology to help manage the influencers that our brands are going so re uh, reliant on. A another example, Rana, here is kind of on the expressions, but also the products that are present and, and how you're actually combining both of them. Absolutely. So uh, right now, of course, uh, influencers love to post on inter Instagram and label uh, certain things uh, with the brand name. So you as a brand want to follow these influencers and you want to know when they're mentioning your brand. Um, so with uh, recognition, uh, you get a whole lot more content uh, identification than just what the influencer uh, put in. Uh, so you can get the whole context around what the influencer was talking about and therefore, uh, you know, brands of course uh, are paying influencers because they have so many uh, followers, like on Instagram, they may have tens of thousands of followers. Uh, so uh, for them, for brands to know when they're being uh, mentioned on social media, like an Instagram, and then to apply recognition and get the whole context around them and get more objects out of the scene, uh, that's a big value add uh, to brands. 
and it doesn't just apply to photo. You guys are from from a technology standpoint able to apply this to the video side as well. Yeah, absolutely. So here's an example where uh, if you're a sports broadcaster, uh, you can actually focus on a particular player uh, and track the movement on that particular player. So let's say that person two is the person of interest. You can track his movement all the way to his attempt on goal and then draw a line uh, in the background showing his exact movement. This is really entertaining for people who are watching sports, sports events. Uh, and it's also helpful for coaching uh, athletes. <laughs> the, coming outside of the the relevancy to the creative, it's actually, hey, it can be a coaching tool. So if some of us are coaching yeah. uh, outside of work, maybe we should uh, get recognition up and running on our on our sports teams. Uh, but seriously impactful for the massive media companies that are broadcasting this, but also trying to dynamically personalize what's happening right on scene to the experiences that the audience observes so this is run i think a good a good segue for us to talk a little bit about video specifically video mm -hmm. is the fastest growing asset class that we see uh within global edit we know as a as a content producer the audience expects a rich experience which is supported by a variety of assets and video is is allowing us to showcase our brand and our products and our marketing material or, or content in a, in a new way. And Amazon is helping us scale really well at Global Edit. Uh, we've invested our video platform heavily through Amazon uh, Elemental, which is a really scalable platform that if you had asked um, five years ago that we're gonna advance the technology of video within Global Edit, we'd be looking at massive infrastructure investment compared to the ability to quickly implement elemental infrastructure services into global edit to bring the capability of video to our end user in, in a very fast time frame so rana video is growing i'm sure you talk to a lot of clients who are growing their video uh needs how is amazon solving some of those challenges at a really scalable way yeah absolutely so because we uh, can translate the speech in a video to text we can automatically add captions to a video. Uh, so uh, that's one, so automated captioning is, is a big uh, demand uh, within uh, the AWS ecosystem. And then uh, once the video is captioned, uh, the video producer may want to distribute the video to other countries where they speak Spanish or French or German. And we then have, we, we have automated machine learning based translation services uh, which can take, you know, English uh, captions and translate them into, for example, Spanish. So now you have a new, now you have a video that's now captioned in Spanish, right? You had one in English, now it's in Spanish. Mm -hmm. All of this automated. Um, and uh, we, 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 you are, you and Global Edit are, many, are leveraging elemental media services uh, to help your customers with video on demand. Uh, so uh, if you have a library of videos and you want users to consume those videos uh, in an easy manner and reformat those videos so that they can be consumed on any device, it could be an iPad or an Android phone, any of these devices then can be used to consume, consume the video that you're offering on demand. This, this is all enabled by our AWS Elemental Media Services. And it, get, it gets back, Rana, to me, it keep, like the buzzword you said, and it will live with me forever today, is comprehensiveness. As a content producer, we're, we're constantly taxed with yet another system, yet another system. And, I, and for us at Global Edit, with the creative workflow solution that we're providing to our customers and, and every day talking to prospective customers about, video as another asset class within global edit means as a content producer you have a more comprehensive solution and it's scalable it's so, so often are are we probably still pegged by the days of well how many gigabytes or terabytes of content can i put in the system and our answer to our prospective and existing customers is put in as much content as you need to support your brand and and your audience so I think it's really important and, and amazing that the scale in which we're innovating and, and, the, and the comprehensiveness that the technology allows us as a software provider to, to this audience here that's listening, but also 
to the technologist who wants to leverage recognition within their own infrastructure um, technology portfolio, both are such an easy uh, reality. So, so let's transition a little bit to, we produced amazing content, we have had amazing ability to keep the comprehensiveness of our content deliverable to our audience, at, at the realm that, that they expect. Now you have to serve it up and, and you're fighting for attention. So there's there's that ability to, how do you speak to that, that, that audience, that buyer of your product? Yeah, so this gets me to a service that I'm personally very excited about, which is Amazon Personalize. As you know, Brian, about 20 years ago, amazon.com pioneered uh, the notion of recommendation and Basically, when you went to Amazon.com and you bought a book, uh, you got a recommendation that says that customers who bought this type of fiction or this title also bought this other title, right? Which then drove demand for other books in the same genre. Well, that type of personalization technology, that cost Amazon.com multiple millions of dollars to produce, right? But now, thanks to how cheap machine learning and AI is, we're happy to, to give all our customers exactly the same recommendation engine that we used back then and, th and that we've refined over the years, right? Uh, we have now made this personalization technology available to the masses. So no matter how small or how big a company you are, you can now use Amazon Personalize to personalize the content on your website based on how users have engaged with that content in the past. And you can have a recommendation and you can basically le leverage the recommendation engine to say that, you know, customers who engaged with this type of content, uh, you know, also, you, you, may, you may also enjoy this other content or you may also want to purchase this other product. Uh, this is the, uh, the technology now uh, that is now being brought to every company of every size using Amazon Personalize. <clears throat> And I think it stems from two things, which to me, working with creatives every day, it, it is all about, which is the accessibility of great content, which we've talked a lot about how to provide that accessibility. But I think the one thing that stands out here, and I can't, and I can't stop looking at it, was it's the metadata. And so much of the creative process, it, and it starts in the early stages of planning, it actually impacts so much of the ability that we have the have control of, which is deliver an amazing buyer experience. And you may be a buyer of watching a film on Netflix or, or Amazon video, or you may be a buyer on an e-commerce website for a new polo shirt, but it stems from that ability to have metadata, which is something that is through and through culture of global edit and something that we indoctrinate any client or talk to prospective clients about, which is, have a strong metadata portfolio so that you can leverage technology like this. So mm -hmm. I think, Rana, we've, we, we've, we've unpacked so much about various technologies, opportunities for scale, but the benefits, they come back to four core principles. And timeline is one. We know that as a creative content producer or someone who's responsible for marketing that content, the timelines are only getting shorter. The campaign cycles are only growing in scale. Uh, how do you help clients measure the, the impact of automation, Rana? Yeah, so we absolutely uh, uh, are, are able to help them calculate their ROI because what happens is that, uh, just like the example that I said with C-SPAN, uh, they see measurable impact in terms of how quickly they can catalog all their content uh, how quickly they can classify it. Um, and then uh, in terms of the personalization, they're actually seeing revenue gains uh, after they personalize their website because users are more engaged and they can see that in increased revenue. They can also reduce freelance hours because now uh, things that used to be more manual uh, in the, are now being done automatically by machine in the cloud. And of course, uh, lightening the tech stack. So these are all things that have quantifiable ROI. And to the greater business, which I think for those that ha might have holistic accountability, the impact of, of something like, hey, do you add metadata to your images or video impact the ability to personalize through Amazon Web Services, which means do you have a holistic 
impact on the business, which is, are we selling more product or renting more movies or purchasing more movies or selling more ad campaigns? So that, that power of automation and the power of personalization have holistic business impact. Yeah, absolutely. So Ron, I know we're getting towards uh, the just the back a uh, couple minutes of this uh, presentation today, and we're going to meet again uh, at on the third part of our webinar series to talk about how you bring together the technology component of an organization's step towards the cloud. But also in our second webinar series, we're going to talk a little bit about how is an organization to you going to get the the people and the process orchestrated around the technology. Before we do that, I just want to kind of talk about a few specific examples where you saw really big impact. And uh, one of them, true to Global Edit, is the ability to scale metadata, the ability to have a really scalable infrastructure through Amazon Web Services means that that backbone of some of the key things you've talked about, which is enriching through recognition or personalizing through the usage of metadata is crucial. But there really are some other big benefits on the personalization side, and I want I want the opportunity for us just to go through two examples before we start to just uh, transition to a bunch of the questions that have come in today. So, talk to us a little bit about how Stock leveraged that holistic experience to create a really personalized end user experience. Sure. Here's an example of a retail catalog that's on the web, and this customer uh, applied personalization service. Uh, on AWS to their retail catalog. And the end result of that, the, their, their users were shown products that were more uh, relevant to that user. And as a result, they were able to gain 15% uh, additional revenue uh, as a result of uh, the personalization. Plus there was 50% increase in customer um, engagement on the recommended for you product. So they're able to measure the engagement on the page and the engagement bumped up by 50% uh, once they added uh, Amazon personalization to their website. That's amazing. The other uh, big win, on, and I think this is really important because uh, content is king for us that are tuning in to a TV or a tablet, is on the media and entertainment side of content production. Yeah, so here's a customer who's engaged with sports content, and they're able to increase their video consumption by 20% by using personalization. Why? Because just like when Netflix tells you that people who bought, who basically people who watch this video, uh, watch these other videos and they tell you about content that you're more, more likely to watch, a recommendation engine for videos, that's exactly what Personalize gave this company and that's how they drove engagement on it. It's really powerful because as someone who sits on the front lines of creating this content, there's still so much work that goes into crafting and tuning that creative after it's been perfected for the audience's eyes. And some of the tools that go into that, I sometimes forget that the upfront work that we do in the creative process influences it so much. So that ability to have a really efficient creative workflow stems so far downstream all the way to the end user, to that, to that buyer in, in, in many ways. Yeah, absolutely. So Rana, you've spent a great deal of time sharing a great wealth of knowledge about how Amazon is an amazing partner of Global Edit for scaling our own software that is in the hands of thousands of creatives every day, but also as its own standalone technology. So I guess Rana, uh, where does creative workflow go from here? What, where do you think are the next one or two years of creative workflow automation in the lens of AWS and Global Edit? Well, we're excited about technologies such as real-time uh, video translation of captioning and things like that. Much more real-time tracking of what's going on in social media, sentiment analysis being done more in real-time as Twitter uh, you know, expands what your reach is and so on and so forth. I think these are things that we're looking to and which are going to happen in future. Amazing. So this concludes the presentation part of our discussion today from Rana and myself. And Rana, I I can't thank you enough and I can't thank the audience who have listened in today and may download this and listen to it on their phone uh, tomorrow. Thank you to everyone who's really 
participated in hearing the status of creative workflow automation, but also the future of creative workflow automation. So we did get some questions, Rana, along the, the time that we've been discussing today's mm -hmm. webinar that I wanted to just bounce a couple off you. And I think um, these are, it'll be interesting here to get your perspective, which is the first one, all of this technology, Rana, sounds amazing. And the, and, and the question directly is, how do you get started in implementing automation into a workflow? I would say uh, if you want uh, your workflow to be uh, automated, reach out to your uh, local, uh, reach out to your global edit representative, or reach out to the experts, uh, or, or reach out to your account team on AWS uh, to leverage these types of services. So yeah, contact uh, subject matter experts at uh, AWS and at global edit in, uh, and to, to, to take the next step forward. And I shouldn't probably be intimidated by what it means to say, hey, I wanna tag my images automatically. It, it seems like, we now have that technology to do that. So um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that hits the nail on the head is to, um, taking that bold step to say, hey, I wanna solve a problem that has greater business impact than just myself as the retoucher or the creative director. Uh, next one, Rana, that came in is, is there a reason to implement automation if you're a freelancer? I, I think so. The cost is so cheap now. Uh, why would you, as a freelancer even, why would you not want to have workflows that automated generating thumbnails, for example? You don't want to do that manually. Uh, and things are cheap enough now that you can easily afford to use the thumbnail generation and some of these recognition capabilities as well. Recognition costs, you know, uh, really pennies in terms of uh, the ability to, to recognize objects. And, and as a very close partner to your Rana, I would say solutions like Global Edit that have implemented workflow automation and some of the scale that often the early uh, promoter or, or adopter of it is the enterprise because they're, you know, the well-funded part of um, our community in the creative sense is Global Edit has adopted these scalable solutions for all creative users, not just that large enterprise. Uh, Rana, we're, we're just at the hour, so I'm going to um, put one more question on here. We have a few more that if your question today didn't get answered, we'll make sure that we follow up and answer them directly with you. Thank you. There's been so many good questions that have come in. Is And this one, Rana, I, I think um, I already know the answer to, but I'm just, I guess I'm curious is, do I need a team of developers to get started with this automation? Or how complex is this going to be to get going? Uh, not for using services, uh, out-of-the-box services like recognition or, or personalized. I mean, uh, a lot of these things uh, are mainly configuration as opposed to writing a whole bunch of code. So you do not need a team of developers. Uh, you'll need people who understand the service pretty well and who are able to stitch together uh, services together. Uh, if though uh, you need a special highly customized workflow, by all means, uh, you know, reach out to us and we'll help you. Awesome. So, Ron, I know that we're, we're at the hour. There is a few more questions that came in, but just in the, the sensitivity of folks' time that are on the line today, I want to be respectful to that hour. Again, we're going to be sharing a recording of this webinar with everyone who's registered. If your question today did not get answered, we'll be reaching out to you directly to answer those. And a major, huge thank you to everyone who spent time on the line with us today. Hopefully, if, if you're walking away with uh, one takeaway, it's that the creative workflow automation is here, it's now, we should take advantage of it. And if you have any questions, Rana and I are most certainly happy to help you. And certainly last but not least is Rana, thank you very much for your wealth of knowledge uh, in today's conversation. We really look forward to picking back up with you in our third webinar in, in September. My pleasure, thank you for the opportunity, Brian. Okay, thank you, bye-bye now.